good morning everybody. Coming to you from Arkansas. Yeah, uh, what, a, what a crazy couple days it has been for me here on the road. I, I don't even think you're gonna, you're gonna believe this. I drove eight hours south of where I was at camping in my last video to literally look at a house, some property down here. Little uh, tiny house property. And uh, what a surprise, it was not as described. But you know what? It's all good, at least I checked it out in person. I'm chasing those dreams, guys. There will be more opportunities later on down the road. I'm in no hurry to get land. I've got an awesome RV, so holy cow. Reset everything, get back on the road. <laughs> Let's go have a great day together, guys, okay? We're going to be leaving Ark. We're going to be starting in Arkansas, probably heading into Missouri, and we're going to have a good day together. Okay? Thanks, guys, for being here. Here we, here we go. And you know, I can't really fault the listing. The guy who bought the property bought it sight unseen out of Florida, and is now selling it. He he still has never seen the house. So I offered him some pictures, and I said, you know, basically, uh, by the way, here's what it actually looks like right now. Uh, so. Um, you know, I had to come down and I had to look at it in person. Usually, if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. Uh, you guys know I've, I've been looking for a little bit here, though. I've been, I've been kind of trying to find the right piece of homestead, home base, future home where I could park my RV legally without problems and also possibly fix up a little house or tiny house or something. So um, I'm still just looking for property. It doesn't have to have any structure on it. I just got a little, little bummed out today. It's all good. We'll just uh, keep looking. <laughs> what a good day for travel. It is 72 degrees out here and I'm loving it. Like literally loving it, guys. Hey, I mean, back roads are fun, right? Uh, we're really close to the Great River Road. Basically, I'm following the Mississippi River uh, just on the uh, Arkansas and Missouri side up here. and. I've already done the Great River Road. This road is really bad. They keep having signs that say rough road. But yeah, uh, I, I'm in no rush. There's uh, one place up here once it turns residential again that I want to check out. Oh yeah, this road is rough. Like, so rough that I want to stop and check the motorcycle on the back, but it looks to still be attached. Good Lord, Irkin Sirs. Fix your row ads. <laughs> All right, we'll stop up here. Going down a dirt road in Arkansas, y'all. We're only uh, 15 miles from Memphis, if you can believe it. But we're on the Arkansas side. We're in like West Memphis in Arkansas. See this uh, white house off here in the right? That's not loose gravel, is it? Nope, I'm gonna pull off here. And uh, we'll take a look at this house, guys. No, this one's not for sale here. A little piece of uh, country history here, as this sign will indicate. We're taking a look at the boyhood home of none other than Johnny Cash. Oh yeah! I fell into a burning ring of fire. That's right. Kind of nice that he was so close to Memphis to scoot over there and record a few eh, albums, you know. A couple classic songs, you know. This plaque up here says Johnny Cash, 1932 to 2003, was one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century. Successful with country, rock and roll, folk, blues, and gospel music, Cash sold over 90 million albums during his long career. Several of his songs reflect his hard scramble farming youth in Dias Colony, where locals knew him simply as J.R. A freaking legend, I tell ya. And uh, surprisingly, th that was a joke, not surprisingly, locked up. Usually uh, you can go on tours of his house in there, but say it with me, closed for COVID. Yep, yep. So uh, we can't go in there and look, but we can see it from the outside. Little piece of music history here. Thank you, Johnny Cash, for all the wonderful music, man. All right, well, let's get back on the road here. Yes, I've got the drone up in the air. I do it in very careful places, guys, so don't worry. <laughs> I am uh, very safe when it comes to flying the drone. 
I obey all the FAA laws of the Part 107, and I know the laws, and I understand them, and I'm always very, very careful. I like to do it on uh, more rural areas like this. It just gives a neat perspective, and sometimes I don't even know what it's going to look like until I actually get back to editing tonight to see what's going on. But yeah, little dirt roads in Arkansas. Got one more place I want to go to. Not really in town. I think it's the town of Bly Blytheville. I want to stop in there because there's a potential photo op there. Um, and yes, I would love to be able to eat some local food at local restaurants, but again, uh, most of my activities right now kind of have to be indoors because of the fact that everything's still closed. <laughs> and what's the point of taking out a nice burger just to eat it inside the RV, you know? All right, well, we are going to turn left up here. So I'm gonna hit the end of the dirt road drop the drone and uh, get back on the road guys so i'll catch you when we get to our next stop here okay so a dollar 49 for gas here in northeast arkansas the cheapest i paid down near where i was looking at that house was 107 a gallon and i filled up i'm good for a little while here oh uh, and also i did a little bit more research on that that house that area in helena west helena arkansas where the house was at well it turns out there was a tornado that ravished the whole city and the community on eight, on Easter weekend here, earlier this month. So, you know, it's not all the guy's fault who bought it unseen because he didn't even know what the condition of the house was after the tornado. However, that doesn't really explain all the black mold, <laughs> okay? It explains why the windows are all busted out. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not an excuse for why the walls are caked in black mold which is something I can still very easily fix, just replace the drywall and maybe the framework and everything, but still, I'll just keep looking, man. But yeah, they, they got hit pretty hard by that tornado, so, so that's the fact. We're here in Belleville, I think is how you say it, Be Belleville, Arkansas, and I wanna stop up here in town. Even though nothing's open, I wanna stop. Look at all the, the old brick and old buildings here. You can tell this is an old town, Run down old small town is fine with me. There's like trees growing out of that car wash though. Uh, yeah. But you know. All right, I'm gonna stop right here in the storefront because what I wanna look at is right in front of us there. However, you know, if there wasn't a tornado here, then why is, why, <laughs> why, why is this town in Arkansas the same way? <laughs> Yikes. Does anything survive in Arkansas or am I just picking like the worst possible cities? It might actually be that the state of Arkansas is just really poor. It could be like they just don't have the right economy to support. I know they have a really low minimum wage, but all these buildings are shut down. Which is funny because they put a lot of money into the big sign archway there in town. I don't know. What did I call it earlier? Belleville? No, that's in Illinois, Eric. This is Blytheville, the city of Blytheville. Arkansas. Oh man, look at this old Greyhound station, guys. All oh, Art Deco restored. It's usually open, I guess, but closed for COVID. That is a gorgeous bus depot, folks. Reminds me of the 50s and 60s when Greyhound was in its prime. That's just amazing. And it's got the old neon on there up there. Uh huh. Look at the inside. I'm just peeking through the window here. That is so cool. I'd love to go in there. Did uh, you know Greyhound is still operating? Fully, fully functional, although they might not be picking up people at this station, but, but Greyhound has not changed a thing for the old uh, COVID virusy thingy. Okay, let's go follow the Mississippi on the Missouri side now for a little bit. All right, Jack's man, time to wake up. Time to stretch your paws. Maybe we'll get some kibbles or treats. Maybe we will. All right, well, we're making a stop here in Cape Girardeau, is I think how you pronounce it? Cape Girardeau, really close to the Mississippi River. Oh my gosh. Do you guys see this off to the left? There's Quirk here, guys. There's Quirk. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Jax, wake up. Really, it's time to wake up and do your time. Ah, uh, I know what I need. I need an air ride seat. That's what I need, or just, just a, just a comfier driving seat. Um, anybody thirsty? 
just uh, have one soda, guys. Just one soda. <laughs> 605,555 ounces of delicious sugary soda. Yes. Oh, and it's the world's largest fountain drink. Of course. Also, 4,730 gallons of lemonade, record set August 20th of 2017. <laughs> I know about y'all, but I'm thirsty now. Except I'm gonna go for probably a nice coffee, nice warm coffee. Yeah, buddy, you wanna go outside? Yeah, I'm gonna go outside, eat some grass, roll around a little bit. All right, here, I'll help you out. Stay close, please. Yeah, you can smell some flowers. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You're just gonna lay around? Oh, big stretches, thank you oh, so much for stretching. You needed that, didn't you? Wanna eat some grass too? Look at that tasty grass, Jax. What do you think, Jax? Want to chew on some, some Missouri grass? You, still smelling the flowers, huh? Okay, man. Anything else? That's it, huh? Tell me about it, man. I'm done with the road today. I had enough of it. Treats? Did I promise treats? I don't remember if I promised treats or not. You seem to think I did? Should I rethink everything? Okay, I'll, I'll rethink it, okay? I'll let you know what I come up with. Okay, the verdict is you get treats, okay? Cool. How many do you want, like two or three? Two, six? No, you get two. No, not six, just two. Okay, six, you win. You're the kitty, you win. That was my finger. You just ate three. Good Lord, dude. Take it, take it easy, man. They're not going away. It's in my hand. It's right there. Good job. One at a time is better. And he ate them all. Okay. Good boy. I'm proud of you. There's no more. There's no more, buddy. There's no more. I want to go see the river. It's my turn, okay? Yeah, we're so close to Illinois right now and the Mississippi River. I'm just going to go over there real quick and see if there's anywhere I can park and just get my river fix, okay? Okay. You know what's crazy is I can actually smell the rain in the air. I know it. it is going to rain tonight, but I know it's coming because I can smell it through my RV's filter here as I'm running the outdoor air. Yeah. So we're here at, hang on, I can't read the sign. Red Star Public Fishing Access, Missouri Conservation Department. It's open and I'm gonna look for some no overnight parking signs. We got the same sign again, no information, but I'm gonna get some information. Look, there's people hanging out in groups. What the heck, guys? There's a lot of people here hanging out. What do you think? Is this place gonna close at dusk? I can't, can't tell yet. Water looks pretty muddy here. Probably just overflow, and the only thing that's really closed is, for some reason, the bridge. Because, you know, the bridge has COVID. Yeah, but, but everyone else, everywhere else is. Okay. And some of these places in Missouri are busier than when we didn't have stay-at-home orders. <laughs> No, you're allowed to recreate and get fresh air and exercise and stuff. And I'm going to bring out the rowing machine and get my cardio later. But I got my instant fix. The great Mississippi River out here. Yep, yep. I think I've got 45 minutes till the rain hits. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, man. I'm happy to be back in Missouri. That's a negatory, Houston. Thankfully, some uh, people fishing there gave me the scoop. Uh, they do have a ranger that comes in there. Even during the COVID closures everywhere, he will still kick everybody out of there if you're there after the sun sets. So I got my uh, Mississippi River fix. I'm going to do some urban camping here at the Wally World. Look at all the bugs. You see them? It's nasty. There's like bees and everything. Yeah, it's really bad. I'm pretty embarrassed. Uh, I'm going to stay out of the store because I actually don't need any shopping. No, I don't. But I'm making good progress. Got some packages to pick up in Illinois in two days. Two days I should be in Illinois. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to say thank you for joining me on this fun little adventure. I'm gonna do some editing, watch some Netflix with my kitty cat. I know, but it was too dark, they couldn't see you. Yeah, they said I don't show the kitty cat enough. I'm, I'm sorry about that, I'll, I'll work on that, okay? Guys, have a wonderful, safe evening from Jax and I. We will see you next time on the road. Hang in there, guys. I think all this crazy stuff is about to start ending in May. I sure hope so. You guys be safe. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.